What is a species? Easy question, right? You just look at the creature, and if it looks different, it will be a different species. For example, polar bears are a different species of bear to black bears, field mushrooms and fly agaric toadstools are obviously two species of fungi, and the white emerald and red spotted purple butterflies are obviously different butterflies. Except something happens where the white emerald and red spotted purple butterflies share a habitat. We find mixed butterflies, the offspring of the white emerald and red spotted purple butterflies, happily going about their butterfly lives. Obviously looks can be deceiving, so we need a better definition, so perhaps I should elaborate. One thing we can all agree on is that a particular species always gives birth to the same species. A dog always gives birth to a dog. You can cross two breeds of dog and get a different looking dog but it's still a dog, and never a cat. This idea gives us our best definition of a species, a group of individuals that can interbreed in nature, and this definition works fairly well most of the time, but there are some grey areas. The white admiral and red spotted purple butterflies I mentioned before interbreed so often and so successfully that scientists have brought them together in a glorious taxonomic union of laminitis. And the same principle has been applied to other animals, such as happy face spiders, which can look completely different, but since they all can interbreed, they are all the same species. But a male donkey can impregnate a female horse, and she can then produce offspring we call a mule. But since horses and donkeys have different numbers of chromosomes, these mules are infertile, and so the offspring, although a hybrid, do not bring the two species together. The mating, in an evolutionary sense, is unsuccessful a dead end on the evolutionary tree of life. This line can be considerably more blurry. Hooded crows and carrion crows look different, but where they share a range, they can hybridise and produce fertile offspring, and so they were considered the same species. However, not anymore, as in 2002, the hooded crow was elevated to full species status, as the hybridisation was both less than previously thought, and the hybrids had noticeably decreased vigour. We find another blurry line with the greenish warbler, these birds originate from the southern Himalayas, but over time the range of these birds has spread northwards, with groups establishing both to the east and to the west of the Tibetan Plateau. But these populations can still interbreed with their neighbouring groups, and so are definitely the same species. The birds continue to spread north, and the two lines, one coming from the east side and the other from the west side of the plateau, came to share a range. But now they couldn't interbreed. Over the generations it took the warbler to get north, small genomic changes had accumulated to such an extent that they could no longer mate. So different species, right? Except that they can still interbreed with their neighbours heading back towards the south, forming a ring all the way around the Tibetan Plateau, hence the name of this phenomenon, ring species. In an evolutionary sense, what we are seeing with a ring species is speciation in progress. And if the ring were to be broken, the two resulting groups would diverge and complete the speciation event, resulting in two fully distinct species. But it's about to get even weirder. Tamiya Taho is a type of stick insect native to the area surrounding Lake Taho on the border of Nevada and California. Unusually for animals, the entire population of this insect has been abstinent for the last million or so years, quite long enough for all the boys to die off, leaving the remaining females to go it alone, so to speak. With no males around, our definition of being able to interbreed falls a little short. However, this insect is a specialist at asexual reproduction, and so we can consider this as a single species. Bacterial species are a whole nother type of bug. In the 19th century, things were simpler. Bacteria were named and divided into species based on their pathology, Mycobacterium tuberculosis being the causal agent of tuberculosis. Clostridium tinnitus causes tetanus, and Neisseria gonorrhea causes gonorrhea. But these days, things are a little more complicated. Conjugation is the bacterial equivalent to sex. But for a bacteria, sex is a rather one-sided affair, with one partner making a genetic donation to the other. This helps spread genetic diversity, however reproduction is done with cell division. To make matters more complex, bacterial conjugation is also not entirely limited to within one's own species. Agrobacterium uses conjugation to introduce new genes into plants, sometimes genes that we have chosen to introduce through genetic modification. So, the concept of a species is difficult to fit into the microbial world. The gold standard of defining a bacterial species is 70% genomic identity, 95% transcriptomic identity, and a high degree of phenotypic similarity. And all three of those criteria are rather arbitrary. So what can we make of this tangled tree of life? Well, it's prudent to remember 
that the concept of a species is a human construction that we have invented for our own convenience and as such does not quite perfectly fit the natural world in which we live. However, it can still be a useful tool to help us understand the world around us.